I'm John Archibald with uh, AL.com's Reckon, and we're here today with uh, gubernatorial Doug New Blue Smith. Uh, Mr. Smith, appreciate you coming by. Thank you, you. As I understand it, you've been uh, you served with a couple of governors, a senator, what a couple of couple of congressmen. Congress. You've been involved in economic development work here for yes. decades. What what puts the new in your blue? Well, we are for decency. Uh, in our approach and working across the aisle with anyone who has good ideas. You, I see you've got the, the Make Alabama Great hat again on. Is that a, a nod to the president or a taunt? Well, neither. This uh, is a tip of the hat to Alexis de Tocqueville who said that America is great because she is good. Uh, and Alabama will be great again when she is good. And she'll be good when we get rid of the corruption on Goat Hill. That's a, is that a prime part of your campaign, of your government strategy? Yes. Um, how would we go about cleaning uh, cleaning Montgomery up? Well, I think we start with this election and clean uh, Goat Hill up. You uh, you've been uh, heavily involved in economic development, and I think yes. that we have disagreed sometimes on the method of which economic right. development is pursued. I've I've criticized. Uh, sort of the incentive program as a give away the farm effort and you've taken issue with that. What is your philosophy there and what, are you, what is your strategy for economic development? Well, I set up the machinery that um, was our economic machines that brought in over 350,000 good paying jobs into the state that worked for over 35 years. It served at least six governors, uh, both Democratic and Republican governors, well uh, until 2002 when Bob Riley came in and started taking that machinery apart. Uh, then Bentley finished the job tearing that machinery apart and uh, Ivy clinging to the walls was complicit and said nothing. Uh, and we've been going downhill ever since. Let me back up just a little bit. So you, you worked in the, in the in Lurleen Wallace's administration and, then and Albert Brewer's and then I worked in the transition of six governors after that keeping that machinery intact and keeping it running. And when you talk about that being dismantled uh, what was dismantled in 2002? Um, Riley took the Office of Intergovernmental Affairs apart in Washington. He dissolved it, fired Ronnie Flippo, its executive director. He uh, started dismantling ADO, the Alabama Development Office, and Bentley abolished. A B A D O, and separated it from a DECA, the Department of Economics and Community Affairs, and Bentley separated a DECA from the Regional Planning and Economic um, um, Department of Economics and Community Affairs from these regional planning commission. Well, and what was the purpose of that? I don't know. I think it was mostly ignorance. They didn't know how it functioned and how those interfaced 
with the Appalachian Regional Commission's local development districts. They all sang in symphony together and built hundreds of industrial parks throughout the state. And we invited industries like Mercedes-Benz and Honda and Boeing and Martin Marietta uh, and Honda and uh, Toyota Mazda, the whole works. Sikorsky, the whole works and hundreds of smaller industries and paid part of their capital cost of coming here, which you don't agree with. But we paid about $350 per job, which was largely paid for with federal funds. Well, yeah, well, I don't want to get into our argument. I just think that we need to make sure that we get what right. we pay for and we hold them accountable when that happens. Right. Um, but as far as some of the issues that people are, are more uh, maybe connected with, I mean, what, what do you, does Alabama have enough money to function? No. And how do we what, get that money? What happened when they took this machinery apart, when Riley came into office in 2002, the state's budget was 49% federal funds. By 2014, in Bentley's administration, it had dropped to 37% federal funds or less, a 12% drop. Now, based on the budgets being passed this week, which is $14.6 billion, 12% of that equates to one and three quarter billion dollars plus. That shortfall is why we have a shortfall in virtually every department in the state. That's why we can't fill our potholes, why we can't stripe our roads. Mm -hmm. That's why our mental health department's in crisis, why our schools are malfunctioning, yeah. why our National Guard has been cut from 22,000 troops to less than 12,000, why our highway patrol has gone from over 1,000 troopers to less than 250, why our state parks have closed on, on, and on. Right, and, and the problem, of course, is that the legislature is sitting down there with uh, all of whom have no new taxes pledges, and none of them right. who like, well, uh, many who don't like lottery and don't uh, want to think about things like legalization of marijuana, other potential. What do you think about any of those issues? How do we raise money? Well, I think that you put the economic machinery back in place and use those mechanisms to turn the spigots on again and get those federal funds once more. We are heavily dependent upon federal funds. Mm -hmm. Governor Lurleen had the right idea. She would accept the federal funds, then ask for waivers for any regulation that she didn't agree with. The, That's the proper approach, I think. Right. The, 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 the problem is those are sort of long-term solutions, right? And no, they we, can be done quickly. How quickly do they pay off? I think they pay off quickly. A grant in aid doesn't take long. Plus, President Trump is looking favorably on block grants. I think that we ask for block grants and an aggressive governor can lobby the Congress for block grants. Now, Our you, governors have not been testifying before the Congress. They have not been aggressive in changing this system. 
you, at the same time you can do this, you can solve the national debt problem by switching to block grants, which is more efficient than this grant in aid system. There are 1,022 grant in aid programs, which are terribly inefficient. Right, but of course that, that whole list of things that you mentioned earlier about where we don't have enough money, uh, including I would add the prisons, I guess, to that. How, right. how, do, how do we deal with the prison overcrowding issue, which is a real problem in the state right now? Well, I think there are a, a two-pronged approach. I think we get more money for it, and secondly, that we have a triage and separate the opioid and drug prisoners from the other prisoners and treat the uh, former as mental health patients and separate them from the other prison crowd. So they would be incarcerated but yeah. as mental health prisoners right. because they're getting treatment? Right. See, 90 percent of our mental health funds come from federal funds. Uh, would you support a lottery? If the people vote for it, that is a decision to be made by the public. What about uh, our, re our readers for some reason are very interested in legalization of marijuana. What do you think of that? I, of course, favor it to this extent. My voice is affected by a condition called myclonia. Marijuana without THC clears up my voice immediately. So I would certainly prefer to have marijuana without THC in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm certainly in favor of limited medical marijuana for medical purposes. Uh, how, how, how is has your campaign gone? Are you raising money? Do you have much support? Or are you just out right. against the world? Right. Uh, but I don't think that my campaign needs a great deal of money because my campaign is idea driven. When people find out what the Republicans have done to chop up this economic machinery, people are incensed and immediately get on Facebook and spread the word. Uh, as far as making Alabama good again, um, in addition to the economic development engine and restoring that plan as you have it, what makes us good? I think that it is the moral basis. We are fundamentally a Christian sovereign state and we are a hospitable, warm, friendly people by nature. Uh, it is not our nature to be um, corrupt and to act in a greedy, selfish manner. We weren't raised that way. That is not our upbringing. That's a pretty bold statement for somebody who lives in Montgomery. Yeah. But uh, I appreciate it. Well, uh, Doug Newblue Smith, I really appreciate you coming in, and uh, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you.